bravo, bravo, bravo. John Wooten, Thursday Throwdown, Drumeos, welcome Drumeos. So, I'm not in Connecticut right now. However, we're going to talk about Connecticut. We're actually in Aguadilla, Puerto Rico, on the beach. Spent the whole day on the beach. I don't know if you can tell. I'm working on my savage tan. Jacqueline is behind the, the phone filming. We're here in Aguadilla. Jacqueline, show him a little bit. So we can see it's a little pueblo and a loud truck is about to come by. A big loud garbage truck. There he goes. But other than the garbage truck. What? Yeah, that's right, eat your heart out. So we're in Aguadilla. Uh, Puerto Rico it's on the west end get your map out check it out and uh, we love it here because there's not a lot of tourists it's mostly locals and uh, we just hung out at the beach all day and chilled after a long weekend so this weekend though I was at the at Dram which is the Deep River Ancient Mustard so that's the, at Deep River Connecticut we were in Deep River Connecticut where they have this every year and it um, when you check out these videos, I know you're going to want to go. It's like the mecca for American rudimental drumming. Just so you know, you know we got Swiss rudimental drumming, French rudimental drumming, uh, European kind of, which is all of those. But, uh, and then we have American rudimental drumming, which is special to what we do in the United States. And what basically, what almost all drum set players in the United States have been born out of this rudimental drumming system. Um, you know, so it's good to know your history, and this is one place to go to find out a lot more about it. And I learned a ton in Connecticut. I got to interview a couple of people, which we're gonna you're gonna see um, in this video, and I, and I got to film several of the drum lines at a competition. Are the waves too loud? Is that is that a distraction? The waves. Listen, listen to this one. Listen, listen. I hate to even talk over it, you know? Pretty sweet. So, anyway, back to rudimental drumming. Uh, Cliff Burroughs, I interviewed him. You know, he, he's been, he's a rudimental drummer from Connecticut. This whole area, New England, has a whole culture. And it's really, really unique to that area in that they have this, and they get together and do these musters all the time. This is the biggest one, Deep Rivers, the, the largest of the American uh, ancient musters. But, you know, with him, you're gonna find out his whole family is involved. And that's that's the case for a lot of them. There's a few other people I wanted to interview I didn't get to, like Dominic Cuchilla. I know his whole family's involved. Brendan Mason, uh, you're gonna see his drum line, the Patriots, and uh, he plays in the snare line, he, and he leads the whole drum line but his brother also plays in the snare line and his other brother plays in the bass line you know and it comes from a long lineage in the family so it's a it's a whole really cool um, environment where these families are involved but old friends get together and they just drum so they have like a, an exhibition uh, and what they call a tattoo which I'll explain later. I gotta get the actual words. It's, it's not the word tattoo like you get on your arm. It comes from a Danish word that, that sounds like tattoo, but it means it's actually a signal to the bartenders to turn off the taps so the soldiers could go to work and the drummers could get, get to playing and, you know, and do the signals for the soldiers to go to work. So that's what it comes from. And so when they drum it, it's the tattoo. Okay, so. We're gonna get into this. Um, I'm gonna show a, a, a group here rehearsing. Well, actually what you first saw was the Patriots. That was the group I was telling you about with Brendan Mason. Excellent, excellent players. 
uh, the really, they play with a lot of power and a lot of finesse at the same time. But these are rope tension drums. All these drums are rope tension. Of course, they've been, they're not playing on exact kind of drums you, they would have played on in, the, say, the Civil War or um, uh, colonial times because they, they, a lot of the drum heads are actually made out of Kevlar or Kevlar weave. So there's a lot of changes have been made. The ropes that they use on the drums um, have been, are stronger. They actually have Kevlar in them so they don't stretch as much. So they, they do, they've made some different changes to it, but basically they are rope tension. There's no cranking on the drums. Same with the bass drums. Uh, bass drums still use, as you'll notice, all the, all the skins are calfskin heads. They still use calfskin heads, and they get a real dark, warm sound with the bass drums. So check that out. Okay, so we're gonna get into it, and then I'll get back with you after I showed you a couple of these interviews. And, um, oh yeah, I said Cliff Burrows and uh, Dave Loyal. Oh yeah, I gotta tell you about Dave Loyal. Woo! Dave Loyal, okay, we're gonna interview Dave Loyal in a little bit. And um, he just made me this beautiful drum. You're gonna see the drum, you're gonna see me playing it, but it's a special drum. It's, um, you know, it has the eagle on the front, which is typical, but usually it's a sunburst and everything. And I told him I wanted the eagle, but I wanted it different. So I just made a request to make it a night kind of nighttime instead of daytime with the sun. I said, and put a crescent moon in the night sky just because of New Orleans. I'm from the New Orleans area and New Orleans is the Crescent City. And then if you notice in the talons of the eagle, in one talon it has a crawfish, because I'm from Louisiana and I love crawfish. I've been eating them since I was a baby. And in the other hand, other talon, they don't have hands, they got talons. And the other talon, he's got these sticks with the silver on them and the, and the contour, my, my signature sticks, my new signature sticks. So this is perfect timing, right? Because these just came out. Okay, and then at the bottom, there's magnolia leaves, magnolia uh, flowers and leaves to represent Mississippi where we live. And, uh, and on the shield, there's a fleur de lis, which is the Louisiana state flower as well. So we got the Mississippi state flower and Louisiana state flower. And he uses silver, is it called silver leaf? Silver leaf, and not gold leaf, but silver leaf. And so at night, it's beautiful. So just a beautiful, beautiful drum. I'm super excited to be playing on it. I can't wait to get home. Well, not yet. I, I can wait to get home because I'm here. We're here, right, baby? We still got a little chilling to do. So, all right, here we go. Uh, first, we're gonna show this, this interview with Cliff Burles. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you get something from it. And I'll talk to you later. This is Cliff Burroughs. I met him last night here at Deep River Muster in Connecticut, Deep River, Connecticut. Just stood next to him and he started helping me out, helping the, the new guy kind of hang on. And I, was, I wasn't really hanging on. It was, it was pretty funny. It was pretty bad. Yeah, he's being nice. But anyway, get to talking to him and uh, his, his group just played. You're going to see his group as soon as we're done here, the Connecticut Blues. And uh, one thing that's what blew me away about this whole thing is the culture and the family and stuff. So, you know, I don't, you guys may not even know how, how nice you have I mean, This is so cool. You know, we do rudimental drumming like crazy, but we don't have this. No, this is a family thing. We've, started, we've, we've been doing this forever. At least I have. Uh, I came to my first Deep River Muscle when I was eight years old. Eight. It was, it was a long time ago. Yeah, I was seven years old because my father saw the uh, uh, sailing masters playing and he joined the story of sailing masters and um, then I started taking lessons in 1969. He passed away 
I fell out of it. I got back in in 1971. I mean, still doing it. Yeah. Um, so did you? Now your wife is in the, in the corps. Yep. My wife. That's how I met her. Did you? You met her in the corps. Yeah. She was the uh, the drum major. So like I said, I've been following her down the road for a lot of years. And so last night I playing these two tall guys playing next to him, but the other tall guy was his son. His son plays snare drum. Yep. Good player. And your daughter too. Plays my daughter's a piper. Um, my son's a snare drummer. My son-in-law is uh, Josh Salazar, he's in the old guard. Yeah. So my daughter was in the old guard also. Um, my granddaughter is start, going to start taking lessons again once things start going after COVID gets over with, I hope. Uh, she's going to take five lessons. Yeah. So and, like I said, this has been a family thing, of what we do. Um, years ago, we were going to move out of Connecticut. And it's like, we can't. This, these people are more family than family. Yeah, the community is an unreal. And then, you know, and playing in the line, like I'm going, how do all of these people, I mean, kids up to 90-year-old men, yeah. all these people know all this music, and they just they just start playing, and then just everybody joins in. Yeah, I, like a lot of the things, like I said to you last night, there's a lot of what they call stock beats that knock that yeah. drum beats will fit a variety of different tunes. Um, there are some of, that's some other ones that have specific music written for them. Um, but then again, it, it, it was a jam session. Right. So you try and play stuff that everybody can play. Instead of, okay, this course, these guys are playing this this version, and those guys are playing that version. You just try and play the whole, you know, play all the same thing. Well, that's what I like about it. Now all the individual chords are playing, and we're going to get a video, which was amazing earlier. I got a, I had a nice view of the snare line right in the front. That was a, we've never had, we've never had nine snare before. Really? That was the first time, yeah. I like how you and your son were on, you know, the bookends. I said to my son, I said, Pete, I'll send you a telegram. Let's know we're going to start. Yeah. That's hard to play on the end, you know? I've always been in the middle of the snare line, yep. drum corps. But every now and then I get on the end, I go, this is not easy. I've always been here. That's been my really? spot forever, yeah. Really? Yeah. It's like a lot of people put the tall guys in the middle. But yeah. It looks good, though, on the end. Well, I play on the end, and you obviously try to play center. Yeah. So I try and play to Josh, Patrick, and uh, Philip in the middle. That's good. So the other guys play towards the other two, yeah. yeah. so hopefully it works out. Yeah, well, there's some good players there. In the middle. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm also sitting in the middle of your snare line last night. The power. Man, when y'all hit a roll together, it's like, oh my god. Yeah. And when it, when it clicks, that's yeah. oh my god. Your yeah. whole, your whole belly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're right. The most of us have been playing together for so long. Um, it's just second nature, right? You know, yeah. um, of course. And then you know, when you get these other kids, kids, the newer guys, the newer guys, they pop right in, and they're so they're so good. Yeah. They just meld right in, and it's, there's no problem. Yeah. Well, this is this is really beautiful. We were trying to think of something that we have down south that's similar to this. There's nothing. I mean, that all ages and the community get together and do families and everything. Like that, there's nothing like this. After, really? the, after all the chorus get done playing a selection, then they go, they go back and have another jam session again tonight. Yeah, tonight. Um, I'm looking forward to that. And that goes and you know, I'll be back out there soaking sweat again. Yeah. Like, and they're all camping in these campers back here. And then, yeah, it's hot, people sweaty. I'm not camping. I'm not holding my air conditioner. Are you? Yeah, we, we got a hotel as yeah, well. You know. We're not camping either. I'm going to hold my air conditioner, my shower, and my bed. There you go. That's not messing around. Well, Clint, it's not great to meet you. Yeah, here. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah. yeah. If you need anything, thanks, thanks. ask anybody. I, if that's if that's what we've been doing. Yeah, yeah, everybody's very basketball. Very, I've I've been been offering us food. Area, yeah. We have a camp at my university. We have a hundred. You know, we have a hundred drummers. Most high school and early college age. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We do this you know, a whole week. At the end, the people have blisters. Oh, yeah, they get blisters, and, uh, but, but they also come back years later and say that was one of the most Absolutely. wonderful experiences of my life. I was just going to say the same thing. Yeah. yeah, so, yeah, yeah it's just, uh, what happens then in the South, typically, when they go to, after they go to college, they stop playing drums. Yeah, which is a shame. Yeah, it's a shame. That's a shame. Yeah. Was, like, why you go up here and do this. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I think there's a reason for that. I think that the demand of uh, the... Um, Playing on Kevlar is, is a is a deal breaker. Oh yeah, it is. Because that's, 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 there's definitely work? that. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Arsenal. All our guns are Kevlar. They're playing on table clubs. Yeah. There's Mark. definitely that, but we, we, we have drums in our Mylar still. Actually, I work with the Saints drum line. Yeah. The Saints would be the They use 15 inch drums with, with Mylar. And they refuse to use Kevlar. It's old, for them. kind of old style. Good for them. Funky, funky New Orleans music. Yeah. But one so, of the kids. Again, Patrick. Patrick, uh, set of shirt art. Yeah, everybody here. We got chance Yeah, you know the troopers. Uh, they just got done. Got them playing. Uh, Gus Kuchin. Uh, he played with the uh, the chance from Yeah, like three or four, three or four years ago. So I mean, some of you guys still get back into us. I'm glad. I'm excited to see that come. Like every team has a drum line. Man. Yeah. I mean, I'm a band. Yeah, drum line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's fun. Yeah. Well, thank you guys. Thanks for the information. Good stuff. Peace yeah. of the Hunters move. Yeah. Check it out. I'll look it up. Sure. I'm learning a lot here. <laughs> yeah, because it's just not, you know, my teacher was Marty Hurley. Okay. And, uh, I met Marty, actually. The thing I did. Yeah, so he's from New Jersey. And, uh, you know, uh, he knows this area real well. He'd tell me about all this stuff, but I... Yeah. Until, until you get here, you don't know. So, yeah, I've So, did, have you ordered your room yet? Our, I, have you not seen it? <laughs> go, go check the Dave Royals. It, it's over there. Seriously? Yeah, seriously. Which one's here? It's the it's the it's the moon, uh, the night time. Is that your drum? That's my drum. Are you happy with that drum? I love Thank it. Thank you. Because if you weren't, you buy it. it. <laughs> hey, that's two of us. That's an heirloom. Right there. Oh yeah. yeah.
Bravo. Hey everybody, we're at the Deep River Muster in Deep River, Connecticut. And look what I have here, Mr. Dave Loyal. How's it going, John? Great, man. Well, first of all, look at this beauty. This is, I, I, I'm still kind of in awe. I mean, kind of, it's surreal. That's what it is. So he designed this drum for me. Uh, Andrew Rudder was the artist that did the, and I just told him a, a few things that I wanted on the drum. We'll, we'll get to the company stuff. We might as well talk about the drum right now. Yeah. But we got a few things you got to notice. Uh, we got magnolias representing the state of Mississippi. And we got the crawfish. Of course, I grew up eating crawfish since I was a little kid. So from Louisiana, and we got the fleur de lis, which is Louisiana, but. You know, if you're, if you're in the South, it kind of represents the South. And then we also have a crescent moon representing the Crescent City, New Orleans. And of course, Dr. Throwdown and John Wood over there. And it's, what you call it, Silver Leaf? Yeah, so something something cool that we did on this is we actually did a, uh, a nightscape of the eagle. So we, yeah. we, we took a very traditional design of the eagle and we turned the whole thing into like a moonlit sort of thing, which is why there's a lot of blues and, and, and things in there. Um, but yeah, this is silver leaf in all the uh, the banners uh, and also in the, the fleur de lis. Um, Andrew Ruddle does a phenomenal job. He's an amazing artist with, with coming up with these ideas. So this is a very unique drum. I think the first thing I told John was, uh, you know, it's not for everybody, but I think it's for you, and and and, and I, I think we, we agree on that. It's a loud, it's a loud instrument, and in more ways than one. I like the fact that it's not for everybody. Mm -hmm. It's just yes, definitely. I know I've seen talked about a few people. They're going, what is that? It's like it's a magnolia. They don't have magnolias in Connecticut, so it's like. And then of course my sticks. I like the silver leaf on the back of the stick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I like how the the fleur de lis goes right between the ropes right there. Yeah. Super nice, but these drums are beautiful. They do the, the, the craftsmanship, the hardware. Is all the hardware is made in house, or you? Yeah, so um, we actually do cast a lot of this hardware. Um, we, we have our own foundry where we do a lot of the stuff. We do outsource that sometimes as well, just for um, for time and things like that. But this is a steam bent ash shell, so this is a solid piece of wood that's been steam bent into the the, the tube. But then there's a lot of man hours that go into making these things. So um, it's ash. Yeah, this is ash. So um, you have to stain it. Yep, yep, it's all stained, finished, uh, super durable over the, the paint and everything because we obviously want this to last um, your, your kids' lifetimes. Yeah, um, exactly. And this one's set up with the, the individually adjustable um, snare strainer. Get, get us close up of that. That's what that's really unique here. And it, the guts are all individually tuned. And there's a lot of opportunity to use uh, multi timbre um, type stuff, you know, in the future as well. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's very versatile for experimentation. Um, this is the, currently uh, just uh, all 11 gauge cat gut, which, you know, is, is a barky sound. So uh, that's, yeah. that's a personal favorite of mine. Um, rim guards on the top. Oh yeah, um, rim guards. Yep. We can play rim shots. This is our Swiss Kevlar head on it and, uh, and our new professional drum roll. I didn't bring a strap, but the, the straps are pieces of art too. Yeah, sure. I didn't think of that. Yeah. So, and you want to look at this one? Sure. Yeah. yeah. So, um, this is so price-wise, this one's quite expensive. Yeah, so the amount of handwork that goes into them. Goes yeah, into it, right. So, and it, as it should be, right? Mm -hmm. But I, what I meant to get at, but this one is much cheaper. Yeah, um, well, I wouldn't call it cheaper. I would say less expensive. No, when, yeah, we first, yeah, yeah. when we first, when we first came, right. uh, came exactly. up with the idea, we've actually been working on this one for about uh, about 10 years now. Um, so, you know, everything on this is hand-built. Everything, you know, is, is built in-house. There's a lot, a lot of work that goes into it, which, uh, so the starting point of these drums without a lot of the extra hardware is 1275 currently, which we're probably gonna, gonna have to adjust soon because of just the amount of labor that goes into them. Um, but we, all we've done is we've been able to, to take some of that that work and you know build the same quality of drum as you get with one of our custom drums um, into a package where we've we've taken away some of the labor. Um, so you're not you're not getting a reduction in the quality of the materials. You're getting a, a reduction in the amount of labor that it takes to, to build them. So this is a polymer hoop. Um, this is a very high grade polymer. Uh, we have our own injection mold that that, that makes this hoop. Um, you cannot dent this. Um, I've been telling uh, telling John that uh, if you ever get it dirty, throw it in the dishwasher. It's literally dishwasher. I played safe. a few rim shots on it, and 
Yeah, you didn't do anything. You're not gonna, you're not gonna like break, you know, break the stick. Yeah, I mean, you will break the stick. We, yeah. we, we did that test. Um, we also have glass reinforced nylon ears, which which perform extremely well with the Swiss Kevlar core rope. Um, uh, we've done some stuff with, with indie, um, indie drums um, where we've modified one of their strainers, their throw-offs um, for this. Oh, wow. I didn't but, see that. but so you know, 1275 for the for the um, the base price of the of the the custom hand-built drums. Uh, these are eight hundred dollars. Um, so that's, we're, that's a we're deal. yeah, we're pretty excited that's about that. Um, and the only difference is the leather and the hoops. Um, yeah. The shell is made by Nordic shells. So this is also ash, um, but it's it's an ash ply. So every every ply within here is ash, and we still use the high grade finishes that, that we use, which are uh, they'll stand the test of time. They're they're durable. Yeah. So Dave's not only a drum maker; he's a player. Play no guard. Play bass drum in the old guard. And and your group, when you because I got video of your group, we're gonna play right after this. Awesome. Grand Republic Fight Grand, Grand, Grand Republic, which is from. Virginia? Technically, it's Technically, from Framingham, from Massachusetts, but, right. but we come from all over the country. Uh, you know, it didn't really change. COVID didn't really change our rehearsal stuff because we've always been on Zoom anyway. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. that's an interesting. A lot of the cores here, you know, lately because of COVID, been practicing on Zoom. I think a lot of them do anyway, right? Yeah, but, right. Uh, and they come from all over. All right, man. Well, thank you. Go to Dave. Uh, it's Loyal Drums. Loyal Drums at Loyaldrums.com. Loyaldrums.com. Just like it sounds. Loyal Drums. Go there. Check out this these, this artwork. This, these drums. You can find us on Instagram and Facebook as well at Loyal Drums. At Loyal Drums. Yeah. All right, Dave. Thank you, man. Thanks, John. Appreciate it. Thank, yeah, thanks see you. for the drum. Yeah. Uh, it's. It's. I. I I'm speechless. I'm excited I'm to see what you, what what you do with it. I think that's going to be the most exciting. Thing. We're going to be making videos very soon. Lots of them. Awesome. And I'll be playing this. I I like I, I told Jacqueline, who's filming right now, that we got to display this thing. You cool. can't just sit on a shelf. <laughs> it's got to be. This is a this is a work of art, inside and out. Awesome. So thank awesome. you, man. Yeah, absolutely. Very much. My my pleasure. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks, John. Good. Yeah.
check out this next group. This is the Fort Myers Fire Department Drum and Fife Corps. And it's hard to say that with a straight face because this is really members of the Old Guard Drum and Fife Corps from Washington, D.C., part of the Army. However, we're not allowed to, they're not allowed to perform as that group out of uniform um, in this, at this festival. So, anyway, these are pros. These guys are really good. If you haven't seen the Old Guard, I would highly suggest getting on YouTube, searching Old Guard Drum and Fife Corps and check it out. They are bad to the bone. This is the best. This may be the best drum line in the world, in my humble opinion. And I'm honored to say that in the Old Guard, not the group you're gonna see, none of them are there, but in the Old Guard, I have, I have three former students that, are, that play snare drum uh, with this ensemble. Anyway, check this out. This is, this is pretty bad. Next, the next two short clips, don't, don't go get something to drink. Watch this.
each night at the Deep River Ancient Muster, they have a jam session. And a jam session is just everybody grabbed their drum or fife and went out on this baseball field and started playing, no matter what group you were with. It's just this huge community of drummers, and it was awesome. Um, I was hanging on for dear life, because these guys get together and they do this all the time, and they know a lot of these ancient solos. Many of them I don't know. So I was just trying to listen and play. So it, I love doing that, but you know sometimes it's a little frustrating. But check it out. The next several clips are from those jam sessions. And then after that, a few of the other cores, I put their clips on there as well. Check this out.
right, that's it. The Deep River Ancient Mustard. I hope y'all enjoyed this. Um, for me, it was like uh, going to the Mecca of rudimental drumming. And if you ever get a chance, I would suggest going. They welcome anybody and everybody. If you're interested in this music, you can go to one of these musters. This is the biggest one, but they have several others. They have a few coming up in the, this month. I think it's called the Westminster muster. I'm not sure about that, but you can definitely Google that, check it out. They would welcome you there. And if you brought a drum, it didn't even have to be a rope drum. If you brought a drum, or they may provide a drum for you. They're just that nice. It's just this beautiful community of people and they play drums and fifes together and drink and eat and uh, it's a blast. So I, I would highly suggest it. If, you, if you're interested in this sort of stuff, um, it's important for us to know our history. So as, even if you play rock drum set it, in, in, in this culture in the United States or even around the world, rudimental drumming is part of your, your heritage. So whether you use it or not, I think it's important to know. At least, if nothing else, interesting. So check those out. I hope you enjoyed the video. One last video for you. This is the Patriots from Plainsville, Connecticut. These guys, again, are bad to the bone. Brendan Mason is the leader of this group. And uh, I want you to check out this video. This is some really creative, uh, rudimental writing and, and just some phenomenal playing. So I'll see y'all later, Drumeos. Cheers.